Hey, what's happening, everybody? Pragmatic Addict here. I'm back with my good friend Jacob. Uh, so, a little while back, a couple weeks ago, we reacted to the Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe trailer. And uh, so, we've been waiting for this movie for a long time. We've been really anticipating it. So, I'm not going to give too much intro. Uh, I'm just going to get right into the review. So, for those who don't know, this film is uh, a direct sequel to the film back in the 90s, Beavis and Butthead Do America. So I'm going to do my best to explain this plot because it does kind of juggle a few different things. So immediately, really quickly, where this takes off is, uh, so as far as like how the movie opens and everything, which we'll get to that opening scene in a minute here, but we basically see uh, Beavis and Butthead uh, presenting us with this movie. You know, they're doing like some sort of a presentation, like a narrative speech or whatever. You know, they basically address how long it's been since we've seen them and they say well this is that story so basically the story that follows this movie is Beavis and Butthead are now you know back from the events that happened in the first movie and they're actually at their school science fair and it goes as much as you could expect uh, you know there's little science experiments there there's little projects so basically Beavis and Butthead do what they do best and completely obliterate the science fair and end up burning the fucking place down. And because they are teenagers, we see them uh, next in court where they are sentenced to eight weeks in space camp. Now, here's where things get a, get a little ridiculous for me, which I'm not going to talk about my negatives or positives. Yeah, I'm just going into the plot. Uh, basically, we see them it, at, at, at the space camp where they're actually mistaken for geniuses. Uh, they're in this kind of like control room where they're doing all this crazy shit with all these different things and they're actually mistaken for geniuses. And uh, this woman comes out who is the conductor of the space camp. She's like, hey, how would you guys like to do this in space with me? And basically what they're doing is they're pushing these buttons that's making a rocket display go into a hole you know. And when, <laughs> and when she says, hey, how would you like to do this? What you're doing in space, which they see, wow, these guys are fucking geniuses and they're only like 15. They're like, oh my God, we're going to score in space. So they're like, yes, let's go to space. While they're up in space, um not being actually properly supervised, kind of do what they did in the lab, what they did in the science fair, basically what we have all known to expect from them. Uh, they take control of the ship and completely fuck everything up, where they end up losing a bunch of oxygen from the ship, as well as a bunch of the fuel, and then, you know, everybody that's in the ship with them is like, look, we need to get rid of somebody. It's the only way. If one of us doesn't die and sacrifice ourselves, or a couple of us, we're all going to be stuck out here for the rest of our lives and we're going to die. So basically what it comes down to is Serena is like, I'm, I'm sick of these kids, I'm going to sacrifice them. Fuck it. So she basically lets them go from the ship, and while they're stranded in space, they come across a black hole, right? Well, when they go through that black hole, it actually takes them to our time, 2022. And as they're here, they see a billboard with Serena, where she is governor now. And so, them, being their dumb, dimwitted selves, are like, oh my god. We have to go, she's probably wondering what the hell happened to us. We need to go and track her down so we can score with her. Wow, and this is where, where I, um... Uh, I got into the part where there's a lot of different plot lines juggling. And while we're going with that, uh, we discover that Serena, once she finds out that these guys are back, uh, she's like, I thought I killed them in space 24 years ago or whatever. We need to kill them. So her, along with this whole government agency, is out to kill Beavis and Butthead while they are in the future now trying to still score with Ser Serena. And... Ah, uh, God. This is where things get a little bit complicated. So, there was a lot of things that I was really curious about where they would go with this kind of uh, setting. You know, it's 2022. Are they going to touch on COVID or the dramatic issues of, you know, today? Are we going to see any of the old characters back from the original series? 
you know, here, like, like, what are they gonna do? And one thing that I was really, uh, surprised, but, like, in a good way that they actually ripped on was the multiverse. So, with them being in the future and going through space and everything to get here, uh, they come across two versions of themselves called the genius versions of Beavis and Butthead. And they're basically the smarter versions of them. And these guys come to Beavis and Butthead and are like, hey, you have two days to close the portal that got you here. Uh, if you don't go through that door and close that portal, you're screwed. Everything that you knew uh, up until this point is going to be completely erased and you're going to be stuck here. Now, that is the actual uh, plot, more or less, if you guys followed. I hope you did. Um, but yeah, there were, there were things that I was really excited to see here, you know, and... You know, there were some teases as far as the plot goes where, you know, Mike Judge was saying, like, you know, yeah, they discover iPhones and how to use them and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they do. Yeah, they discover iPhones. They discover Siri, which Serena, Siri, Beavis thinks that he's talking to Serena the whole time, which is actually Siri, and he falls in love with her. <laughs> you know, there are some, you know, nods and focuses on things like white privilege, things on, you know, genders. And, you know, there's this whole thing that could be related to the whole toilet paper thing, you know, Cornholio, TP, yeah. It was bound to happen. But with all that being said, let's, uh, let's get into our thoughts about Beavis and Butthead do the universe. Well, first off, I feel like it's a Xerox of a Xerox of what Beavis and Butthead should have been. I, I completely agree. Not only does it not feel as strong as the show, which that is very common in TV movies, but... This doesn't even feel like Beavis and Butthead. Like, this doesn't even feel... Like, they don't even feel like their actual selves in this. And with a Beavis and Butthead following and all these years that have gone by and now where the film takes place, there was so much that they could have done with this plot. There was endless, endless amounts of things that they could have done with this plot, but in my opinion, they just... They just kind of threw in enough references, did enough with the whole futuristic thing just to say that they did it. You know what I mean? Like, they just did enough to say that, yeah, they included stuff. It, it really, um, if you ever seen, uh, the, it felt like you were watching what they, so you know how with the season they had before, before all this, this oh, the revival yeah. series from, like, 2011? Yeah. It feels like they copied off of that to make this movie. But then they put it, take place in the 90s. And it just feels like they didn't really um, capture the real Beavis and Butthead from the 90s. No, like, I, I, I can agree. It's like they, they didn't even try to go back to their roots. It's like Mike Judge just... Um, jumped right on it and just said, hey, I, I created him. I'm probably good at making Beavis and Butthead and decided, hey, what, let's make a Beavis and Butthead movie. It's kind of like a slap in the face to real Beavis and Butthead fans, you know? I agree, yeah. And, and, and see, and that's the thing is like, so going into the revival, like, I can't exactly remember or recall, like, how I felt about the revival. I think there were some hit and misses, but the thing I was always, like, stuck on with the revival is, like, how Beavis sounded. That was the, my biggest flaw. I'm like, look, I, I appreciate that they're still trying to go forward with Beavis and Butthead, but, like, Beavis be sounding rusty, dude. Like, Mike Judge, like, I don't know if he's quite, you know, able to, to recapture that. And I will say this, Beavis... I, I think that, like, as far as Mike Judge voicing him, I think he did uh, he acknowledge some of those criticisms, and he did kind of uh, have a little bit more time to work on this. And, yeah, I think that him sounding as Beavis, which I even said in the trailer way before, yeah, he sounds fine, but Beavis and Butthead as as characters, I mean, you, you do get the same kind of humor. You do get the same kind of, like, wacky schemes that they get themselves in and how they get out of it. It, it is your typical thing, especially, like... Uh, for example, in the first film, Do America, uh, how, you know, they're getting f into this whole mess of, like, the government following them and wanting to be assassinated and all this stuff. And, you know, just the sheer luck of them just being them fucking selves, getting out of situations. You see plenty of that here, but just them as characters, you... It, I mean, some of the routes I liked, some of them I didn't. Like, what you're saying, I... I no, uh, especially going into Beavis, um, you see cl very clearly on that 
He's not... <laughs> he's not as stupid as he was. Like, you feel like these guys have kind of matured, which could just be the fact that, you know, there's this, been this huge absence of the Beavis and Butthead show and everything, so maybe it just... They need to kind of get back on board and kind of, like, you know, adju adjust to it again, but... This is supposed to be a direct follow-up to Beavis and Butthead Do America, mm -hmm. which I again the the possibilities are endless. The fact that it's a direct you know sequel, the fact that it's been all these years of silence, the fact that they're going to be in the future. There's so much stuff that they could have made this the juggernaut Beavis and Butthead film, and I was just I was so surprised how much stuff got got left out and, and wasn't even referenced and. How much they could have gone with stuff as far as like what fans would even expect that they completely just ignored. Now, I will say this, like there is this big dramatic scene towards the end of the movie between Beavis and Butthead where you do see some emotions that, as a fan, I would have never expected to see out of these guys. Again, you know, the, there is a more mature kind of sense and a more like, uh, you know, future kind of like uh, side to Beavis and Butthead, you know, not just in the sense of where the movie is but how long it's actually been and you know yeah these and there as much as there is like references and how much we do like these guys do feel like beavis and butthead there's the polar opposite of and again going back to like the emotion that i felt at the end at towards the end of the movie there is a, this big dramatic scene which is kind of a bigger scene which is touched on which i thought had never you know would never ever be as touched on as much as it actually is that you know for like in that sake it's like well this is completely new. This is something completely different that we never thought that we would see out of Beavis and Butthead, but it feels well done because it's like, well, this is, you know, like, you know, there's been all these years, what are we going to get? And this is a feature film, which, you know, tends to kind of dive a little bit deeper into something that, you know, whether than the show. And I will say that that was something that was really nice to feel. It was something that was kind of heartfelt to me where I was like, wow. We've come all the way to here, you know, all through the years of Beavis and Butthead, and we finally get to see this kind of a side to them. So that part I was actually very excited about, which I'm not going to spoil. I feel that it was interesting to see them back again at first, and then, like, uh, they go through that uh, black hole, and I'm like, okay, this is where the movie's going to turn to shit. It's like, um... I'm wondering to myself, did Mike Judge actually just make this? Is was he on the writing staff for this, or did he just do the voicing? Because like it feels like he I can kind of see that. Yeah, and it makes me wonder: is the revival of King of the Hill gonna be any good? And I'm like, I didn't Oof. even think about that. And I'm like, now I'm kind of a little worried that he's gonna half acid, you know. Speaking of revivals though, I didn't think about that specifically, but speaking of revivals, I am a little bit concerned about the future of Beavis and Bud. So, there it has been announced that there's going to be a Comedy Central reboot of, of Beavis and Butthead. Now, again, you know, in many cases, uh TV movies like movies based off of the the shows and everything always generally have a different kind of tone, a different kind of flavor, and you know, because there's been episodes and episodes and episodes and this is just one, you know, hour and a half movie, there's not quite as much to unpack. So, you know, that wasn't, that was kind of something that I was considering even going into it. But again, with how smart the writing generally is for Beavis and Butt and how creative of a man Mike Judge even is, and where this plot centers on, this could have been the Beavis and Butthead movie that, like the most Beavis and Butthead movie that could have ever come out. But not just all the flaws that I've already talked about, but like even the pacing. A lot of the movie does seem like filler, I mean, which is kind of fine to a, to a sense, you know, like, for example, uh, you know, before they get up to space, and, you know, before they get to the future and everything, there is just, like, a lot of filler where it's just like, well, let's just get to the next thing, which I understand, but at the same time, it was sometimes to a degree where it was just like, you really just did not seem to give a shit as much at all about this other than the side, other than the actual plot, which was like, well, people are going to want to see Beavis and Butthead in the future, people are going to want to see Beavis and Butthead in space, but everything surrounding that, just, again, not only in the pacing sense or the movie sense, but all the references that they could have gone with, all the throwbacks that they could have done with this kind of being a multiverse Beavis and Butthead movie, 
it was just such a disappointment. But there is some smart writing, you know, they, they do go to some places that are genuinely comedic, that do genuinely feel like Beavis and Butthead flavor. You know, going, like, there's a scene where Beavis and Butthead go to jail, there's a scene where they go to college, and with it being 2022, you kind of get what you expect with that. So, you know, and there are some su surprises. I mean, as far as, like, the multiverse kind of thing goes, you know, especially towards the end, the very, I'd say the absolute last frame of the movie is one of the best things I think I've ever seen in Beavis and Butthead history. And, and with the opening now, which I did say I was going to talk about, oh my god. Ah, there could have been no better way to present this movie. Not just with, like, the whole speech that they say in the beginning that I was talking about, but... The opening, they do this whole galactic space, like, 3D animation, huge, like, hype kind of intro that I'm just like, dude, if this movie was seen in a theater, this is something that you would make key to that. <laughs> it was so, it, 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 was, it was such a great start, but again, you know, there are so many things they could have done with this, you know. Again, it is 2022. There's been a lot of drama in the world the past couple of years. You know, how many of these characters are we going to see, you know, 20, 30 years into the future? And with this being a multiverse, what kind of Easter eggs are we actually going to see? And I'm not going to, I'm going to do my best to not spoil that because, you know, maybe there is something that I didn't catch. But from what I caught is that that is not the main focus. Th that is more so just like, we're going to put, we're going to touch up upon that in the movie. We're going to make that a side thing in the movie, but we're not going to make that the center or the, or, or the focus. And even saying that, again, like I was saying earlier, there was a lot of things they could have done with this movie, but they just, they just completely ignored. Like, I, I, I know this is a big toss around term for movies that kind of like disappoint, but I'm not one to use this term, but I am going to say this film was a big missed opportunity. Overall, I'm going to give Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe a low 3 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 2.9. But yes, like, everything that this movie was hyping out to be, everything it could have been, this could have been explosive, this could have been one of the best movies of the year. And to see it fail to drop, to suit so low to what its execution really was, it's almost to the point where I'm like, how could you act, like how did the film actually get to that point? It had everything going for it and more. Not only was there so much hype about it, but the plot, I'm like, this is the best plot you could have ever done. Not only is it a, another Beavis and Butthead movie, but it's a fucking follow-up to the first film. Where are they gonna go with that? And I'm just saying everything that fans are gonna be expecting out of this, they're not really gonna be getting. But it is, from what I can say, is that it is nice to see Beavis and Butthead being relevant again. You know, just to get some Beavis and Butthead content, period. And again, there are some good things about this movie. It's just, it's not the center. So guys, that is going to do it for our review of Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe. Let us know what you guys thought about this movie as well as the uh, video itself. Are you guys looking forward to the Comedy Central reboot coming very soon? Uh, I do believe it is coming this year. I don't think there's been an actual release date, but I'm hoping that in the very least, what maybe this video can go toward is some of these criticisms, maybe put them towards Beavis and Butthead's reboot. Again, there were good things about this movie, but there was a lot of things that not only shouldn't have gotten ignored, but there's no logical sense that they even did get ignored. So guys, I hope that you're having a good day. I hope that if you guys were excited for this movie, if you did see it, Hopefully you found some enjoyment in it. But that's going to conclude it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.